That's a hundred pounds of smoke goodness. You see it, that's some good chicken. Welcome to Uncle Bert's Barbecue. I'm your favorite uncle, Uncle Bert. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to cook a hundred pounds of chicken without any help from anybody. Let's get started. Since, we, since I got the chicken from the grocery store, it's gonna come in the 10 pound bags and this is what you wanna do to get set up. First, you're gonna need to get your tools together. And in this example, I'm gonna be using a 45 blade jacquard, a pair of OXO good grip poultry shears, and a plastic cutting board. Position your first bag of chicken quarters into the sink. And what you wanna do is you wanna sit it up and then at the bottom, you wanna make a cut in one of the corners. And then you just pull it up and what that cut does is it allows all the blood and the nasty stuff to, to drain out of the bag without you having to get it everywhere. Then you simply make a cut across the top and then that's gonna allow you to get the chicken quarters out of the bag. When you clean the chicken quarter, it's essentially two cuts. One is to remove the tail and the other one is to remove that big nasty glob of fat. This glob of fat right here is responsible for more people hating dark meat on the chicken than anything else. So you just need to remove these two pieces because it does two things. One, removes that nasty glob of fat and also by cutting the tail out, it makes the pieces the, of the chicken much more aerodynamic. That way the smoke will flow over the chicken and it won't catch the edges because when the smoke catches those edges that stick out, what it does is it actually dries out the meat that's close to that part. So you need to be real careful to make sure the stuff is uh, rounded off. The next thing you need to do is to check in the area where the foot is cut off. That's where most of your feathers are gonna be on your chicken quarter. So you wanna make sure you get many of those uh, as you can off when you're doing the first part of the cleaning process. Now if you don't get all of them at this point, that's fine. So throughout the rest of the process before they get onto the smoker, you're still gonna be removing the feathers. So if you miss some here, don't worry about it. You still got another chance to get them off. If, at this point, if you want to rinse some of the nasty bits off, you can. You just need to make sure you use a small stream of water. You just got to remember, you ain't trying to put out a house fire, so you don't want to be splashing the salmonella and E. coli juice all over the kitchen. So, small stream of water, like the size of a number two pencil. So what you want to do after the chicken has been trimmed out and the feathers been removed, you want to go ahead and jacquard the chicken. Now, I'm using a 45 blade jacquard, and you want to hit it one time in the thigh, and then one time where the leg and the thigh meet, you want to hit it in that joint. The jacquard is gonna do several things for us. One, it's gonna make the brine more effective because you're poking holes in the meat. Two, it's gonna tenderize the meat. Three, it's gonna help the chicken cook faster and it places holes in the skin so that the fat will render out. So you'll get that, that bite through skin that you're looking for. After you get done trimming out the chicken, getting it jacquarded, and it's ready for the brine, go ahead and place everything into the cooler. Now I'm using a big cooler for this. Uh, it'll hold 100 pounds of chicken. Now here's the thing about the cooler. You gotta remember, hey, when you start adding all this chicken and all this water and this ice, man, it's gonna get heavy. So wherever you, you want it at, that's where you need to put it. Put it right next to the sink, because that's why I always put it every time, because it's just too heavy to move. Because you're gonna have to remember, you gotta take it out so we can season it. So now we gotta make the brine. Now I recommend a simple brine of salt and water, because it's cheap and effective. You don't need all those fancy salts like Himalayan pink salt, kosher salt. You don't need none of that. Cause you gotta remember, you're gonna throw it down the sink anyway. But hey, if you wanna waste some money, now the time to do it. You're gonna need a measuring cup. You wanna pour one cup of 250 milliliters of water into your measuring cup. Then you wanna pour in any type of plain salt until your water reaches the one and a half cup of 375 milliliter mark. Mix well and pour your slurry into the food safe bucket. You want to repeat that same process, but to fill it into the water reaches the two gallon of the 7.6 liter mark. Now your brine is ready, and uh, you want to just pour it over the chicken. With this amount of chicken that we're doing, you can actually keep the chicken in the brine for up to 12 hours, because it's, it's a whole lot of chicken. So just go ahead and pour your brine over top, and then add your bags of ice. You want to put your ice in the bag. Now I actually used to put the chicken into the brine bag, fill it up with brine and then put the ice around it. And the reason why I stopped doing it is because what happens is when you put the chicken in the bag with the brine, what inevitably happened is a piece of that chicken poked a hole in the bag, then it didn't brine right. So in order to avoid that, I just stopped putting the chicken in the cooler, covering it with brine and putting the ice in the bag. So that way, even if the ice melt, it doesn't dilute the brine at all. Now, another option you got is you can put them in the refrigerator. If you've got the space, you're gonna need four or five gallon buckets. So each bucket gonna hold about 25 pounds or 11 and a half kilos of chicken quarters. So you just cover it with the water, put the top on, put it in the refrigerator. One benefit of this is it helps with the cleanup 
and it also saves you a lot of money on ice because when you want to ice down this much chicken, you're going to spend about $20 an ice. Now, what you want to do if you're not ready to cook everything at the end of that 8 to 12 hour brine period, then what you need to do is you got to remove the chicken from the brine, you got to rinse it off, and then put it back into like a cleaned out bucket, or you're going to have to clean your cooler out, make sure you remove all the brine, uh, wipe it down, and, and put the chicken back in there until you're ready to season it up and cook. All right, it's almost time for the show. Now we gotta remove these chicken quarters from the brine and season them on up for the go on the smoke. Take the chicken out the brine and put them into the sink. Now, use a small stream of water to rinse them off. Now the word is a small stream of water. Remember, you, you're not trying to power wash the chicken quarters. Just a small stream of water to wash off the nasty bits. Go ahead and take a look, uh, do a quick visual audit and see if you got any other feathers that you missed and go ahead and take the time to take those off now. So this brings me to an important part about the seasoning. In order to season the chicken effectively, you have got to season underneath the skin of the chicken. Man, I can't tell you how many times I done went somewhere and all they did was season the chicken skin. As soon as skin come off, all the flavor gone with it. In order to avoid that, you need to season underneath the skin. The way you separate the skin from the meat on the chicken quarter is you start by working your finger down on the drumstick and then you want to pull down with a steady, even pressure. This is not the time to hook out. You want a steady, even pressure, and then you want to use your finger to run up the, the, the skin on the thigh to gently loosen it. Do not tear the skin off. What this does is it's going to create a little pocket that we're going to be able to drop our seasoning into. So I always want to start with the raw cane sugar first. This makes the chicken kind of sticky, and it helps the, the rub that you use stick a little bit better. Make sure you get it underneath the skin. You can kind of go, go heavy underneath the skin and go light on the outside when it comes to the raw cane sugar. After you got the raw cane sugar on there, you want to season with your soft free rub of choice. In this video, I'm using Uncle Bird's hand pack seasoning which is made with granulated garlic, granulated onion, bird seasons and spices, and a whole lot of love. So if you don't got a soft free rub, make your own. You can use one part granulated garlic, one part granulated onion, and a half part of black pepper, and you good to go. Now you also can use Mrs. Dash. They got a whole line of soft free seasoning. The most important part is that whatever you are using has got to be soft free. And if you ain't sure whether or not it's soft free, it got this thing on the back called the ingredient list. Just look at the ingredient list and make sure it don't have salt in there or any type of sodium chloride. Now, we got to get the grill fired up. Since I'm using a big smoker today and I got some really good wood, I'ma just use the chimney starter, man. That's just about the most efficient way. I've tried to torch a gazillion piece of boxes, but they only work when you got really good seasoned wood. Cause seasoned wood makes it easier to control your temperature. You don't get those big temperature swings that you get when your wood is wet. And the reason why you get them temperature swings is cause the first thing that has to happen before the wood can burn is it's gotta, it's gotta drive off all that moisture and it uses a whole lot of the thermal energy to drive off that moisture before it can go ahead and burn. And then when it finally does burn, you got so much wood in there to make the, make it happen that you get this huge temperature spike followed by the big dip as soon as you put some more wet wood on there. So my advice for you is to not get caught up on whether you got hickory or oak or pecan or mesquite, but what you want is season. You want to look for a moisture content of 20% or less. So I open up both doors and then I open up the firebox. Then I put my two splits down at the bottom. Now those two splits are going to be running perpendicular. I don't even know, the same way as the smoke. I don't know which one perpendicular parallel. I'll be forgetting but you want to run them the same way as the smoker's facing. So after I got those first two splits in the firebox, I go ahead and fill up the chimney with some lump charcoal. I use a couple tumbleweeds to get it lit. And then once it's all red and hot, I pour it down there in between the two splits. And then I just put some more wood on the top and I arrange it like a tic-tac-toe board. And that'll get me a whole lot of airflow running through the smoker. That way the fire burn clean. So once most of the wood in that, that I've added to the firebox, once most of that's going, then I go ahead and close everything up so that the firebox can heat up. So my smoker made out of 600 gallon water tank. So it's only about an eighth of an inch. So it only takes about 15 minutes for my smoker to get hot and be ready for some chicken. Just wanna make sure that your grill comes to temp so that when you put the chicken on the grate, everything Things hot and the chicken don't stick. You want to start adding your chicken to the smoker. You want to make sure that you're putting the larger pieces into your smoker's hot spots. That's so that the bigger and the smaller pieces will get done all around the same time. Now, if you're going to be using like one of those leave-in thermometers, you want to make sure that you put it in the smallest piece of chicken that you got. The reason you want to do that is because that smaller piece of chicken is going to get done first. And that lets you know, hey, look, this is done. So I need to start getting ready for the rest of them to get done. That's a little trick that you can use. 
Now, periodically, what you want to do is open up the smoke and you want to spray it with some distilled white vinegar. What this does is it's going to keep the surface of the meat wet so that it can continue to absorb that good old sweet smoke. And then it also has acetic acid in the vinegar and that's going to tenderize the chicken while it cooks. So that's what we're trying to do. We, we're trying to tenderize the chicken at multiple levels. We've tenderized it with the jacquard, with the brine, and now we're also doing it with some vinegar. Now, one of the things I don't really do is I don't really get into a whole lot of flipping the chicken. If, one of the things that you can do is if you're using an offset smoker, as your pieces on the hot end get done you just take those off and then you can just scoop the remaining pieces up and then they'll cook a little bit faster and you get everything done within about a 30 minute win now everything we got looking good got a little dark out here and i had the iso turned way up sorry for the grain that's on the foot now the chicken's almost done and it's ready to come off now if i'm running a smaller batch of chicken something like 10 pounds or something i would preheat the cooler but since we got like 100 pounds of chicken i ain't really find it necessary you're gonna have a lot of mass and once you put it all in there you just do it quick it'll stay hot for hours my plan was to paste 15 pieces of chicken into each bag to make it easy for them to divvy out once it gets over to the party the ones i normally use is Reynolds, and there's another one i've used before those are, they were great options but it just wasn't in stock so i went with another brand i said hey look i can save some money man let me tell you something and these things was terrible first of all they was thin as gift paper like that the tissue that you put in the in the gift bag they was thin like that as soon as i put the chicken in they broke they will not be in the description <laughs> they was garbage anyway so what i had to do is i had to revert back to some of these bags that, that my wife had bought a while back my, my wife liked to buy stuff in bulk so she so she got these great big ziplocs on sale so she bought like 1500 of them i've been using these things for years so i just went in and put all of them in there at that point i was tired i said hey look here man i'm gonna just put them all in the bag in the cooler and you and you, you figure it out it's just that they're not oven safe so that's why i like to use the oven bags that way when i give them to somebody they can just pop the whole thing in the oven just put in a little foil pan they ain't gonna have a whole lot of fun now when you when you packing the chicken what i was doing is i was putting it on a cart so i could put that whole hundred pounds and we wheeled it out to his truck and, and just put it on there and he and he and he took it with him. But if you're gonna have to put this in a car or something, you really need to break these break the batches up and put it in like two smaller coolers. That way you only gotta handle like 50 pounds each. But we got all the chicken, it's all packed, ready to go, close the cooler up, and we got another successful cook under the belt. You just don't, you don't remember, you ain't gotta have a whole lot of people, you just gotta have a system in place to make sure everything's real easy to do. So what I need you to do is watch the next video. <laughs>